Hey everybody, Dan here. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical. Uh, this is a 38 millimeter watch and uh, retails for right around $600. You can actually pick it up for less. Just go on the internet, do a search, and I'm sure you'll find it for under $500 or close to it. Uh, again, this 38 millimeter watch measured from side to side. Uh, it is nine and a half millimeters thin, so it is a very thin watch. Um, the thinnest watch I own, actually. It's approaching quartz territory. Uh, it is 47 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, so it's actually pretty long. You can tell just by looking at it. It's got some length to it. And uh, it's in a matte stainless steel finish. <clears throat> now, this is a recreation of a Hamilton khaki field mechanical that came out back in the 1960s during the Vietnam War and that one was made from 1967 through uh, 1986 uh, and this is just a recreation of that it's very similar though the way that it looks and actually this newer version of it was uh, made famous believe it or not by James Marsden in nothing more than the Sonic the Hedgehog movie so uh, very popular thanks to James but uh, this one's got the H50 caliber movement in it. It's 80 hours power reserve. It's based off the ETA uh, C07.701. It's a 17 joule movement, and it's actually loosely based off the caliber 2824, which is the ubiquitous movement made by ETA, which is in most of the Swatch watches, and uh, is just a good, solid, well-made movement. This one's going to have sapphire crystal on the front, which has a very slight dome to it, as you can see there. Um, it is very, very flat overall. The watch is, itself is very flat. Sapphire is a little bit domed. Uh, and again, 80 hours power reserve thanks to that movement. The beat rate's been slowed down to 21,600 vibrations per hour or 3 hertz. And uh, this watch is awesome. I really like this one. And it's kind of a special watch in my collection. I find myself wearing it very frequently for a number of reasons. And I'll kind of talk a little bit about that today. Um, just a brief history of Hamilton, one of the older companies on the block. Uh, when Rolex was founded, Hamilton was already a teenager. So this company has been around a long time. It was founded in uh, Pennsylvania, I believe in Lancaster, back in uh, 1892. And it used to be an American-made company, and actually was for almost all of its life. It wasn't until 2003 that it became part of the Swatch Group. So I still consider this brand American-made, even if it is, you know, obviously a Swiss-made watch. Uh, historically, it's an American brand, which puts it into a, a pretty small category of watch manufacturers. And that's a really neat thing, in my opinion. Um, this company made watches back in the 1910s, 1920s, pretty much every, uh, you know, wartime, historical time for the United States of America and for the world, this company was around in uh, modern times at least. Um, and back in 1942, they actually stopped making watches for the public just to focus on making watches and equipment for uh, wartime uh, manufacturing. So a very interesting history for this company. And this is a really neat field watch. And I kind of think of this as like maybe the last real field watch. Um, I don't know, some of you have seen the review that I did recently of the Tudor uh, Ranger, which is also a field watch. Um, but this is a luxury watch that looks like a field watch. This is a field watch that looks like a field watch. Now, just take a look at the side of this thing. See the finishing on there? It's got this kind of maybe bead blasted or media blasted finish, and it's got that everywhere all over the watch, at least all over the watch case. Actually, the bracelet itself features sort of a similar finish as well. Um, the only place I've hit this one, I hit it on a wall pretty hard right here on this corner, and you can kind of see it, but it doesn't even really show up in most, most you know, lights and situations. And the finishing on this watch is really what kind of makes it a field watch. This thing can take a beating and this is a watch I'm not afraid to take anywhere with me. I'll take it, you know, in water. I'll take it hiking. Um, basically, if I'm going to do anything that might involve banging my watch around, 
this is the one that I usually go to, and even beyond like my Seikos, because honestly, this is even a little cheaper than a couple of the Seikos that I have. But uh, I just feel like this watch can pretty much handle anything you throw at it. Um, now it's a 50 meter water resist, but I have taken it swimming and I've, you know, put it in water multiple times, never had an issue. Not a screw down crown, that's kind of the only thing, but the crown's very sturdy and it's in there real good. So unless you actually get your fingernail under it and pull it out, there's really no chance of that crown popping out. And because of that, I think it should be a 100 meter water resistant watch. Um, I don't worry about it one bit when I go in the water. Uh, I think it holds up just fine. So, you know, if you got one of these and you're scared to swim with it, I just, you know, don't swim with it. But I'm going to swim with mine because this is the watch I don't mind, you know, accidentally scraping up against the side of the pool, for instance. Uh, it won't bother me because it's just durable and it's just, I think it makes it look even nicer if it gets a little bit scratched up. Um, you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like there in a couple spots where it might have gotten a little scraped here and there. Um, but yeah, very durable, very well made, nice and solid, you know, uh, heavy duty kind of feel to it. The bezel itself is actually, I believe, integrated in the case. So it's sort of just like one solid piece. And that, you know, contributes to its durability as well because it just feels very solid top to bottom. Uh, screw on case back. I'll get you a little better look at that soon. Very interesting bracelet. I have the strap and the bracelet for this watch. The bracelet's held together by uh, little pin sleeves there. Um, but it's got this kind of interesting like snake skin feel to it because they split the center links in half. And it doesn't really pull hair, maybe a little bit sometimes, but not very often. But it gives it sort of this unique movement amongst watches. Um, so it's very, very comfortable on the wrist when it's on this bracelet. The dial is kind of a glossy black, highly legible. It's got a little bit of that kind of faux patina look to it, but um, by utilizing sort of faux patina in certain spots and then stark white in other spots, they sort of get the best of both worlds. And I think the faux patina looks really good on this watch, honestly. If there's gonna be a watch that has a faux patina, this is probably the one. And I'm kind of getting tired of saying that word faux patina, I won't say it anymore, but I think it looks great. Again, highly legible. It's got the 24-hour the, uh, timing in the center there, and then the 1 through 12 on the outside. Got your minute markers. The triangles around the edge are all illuminated. Uh, there's an illuminated pip at the end of the seconds hand, and the minute and hour hand also are fully illuminated. So the loom is not the brightest on the block, but it is long-lasting. It'll last all night long, and it looks really good. So I'll make sure to get you guys some loom shots. Um, you can see the tolerances on this watch are not exactly, you know, the best in the world, but it just goes along with the ethos, which is just kind of like, you know, uh, durability and stability first. You know, take it anywhere, beat it up, doesn't matter. It's going to be just fine. The crown is signed, also media blasted on the side. It's got the nice little Hamilton H there, and it's probably if not the sturdiest crown in my collection, one of the sturdiest. And this is all, all the way in actually, you can kind of see a little daylight there, but um, you know, it's a hand winding movement. It's got a very, very nice hand winding feel to it. It's almost fully wound right now. When it gets to the point where it cannot be wound anymore, it tells you. It literally won't go any further than that. And people wonder about that because sometimes people end up you know, overwinding these things, but I don't know how you could possibly do that because it literally stops. It won't go any further. Uh, popping the crown out requires a pretty good amount of pressure. It does hack the movement, but you'll see. Look at that. It's completely sturdy and stiff. It's not going anywhere. Um, it's got a very nice feel to it when you change the time, and it works like a boss. Push it back in, off to the races. Uh, Three-hander, obviously very easy to deal with. Not a lot of fuss there. There's no hour or no uh, date, day, date feature or anything like that. So it's very easy to set it and forget it. Um, in my timing of this watch, I'm getting about two tenths of a second fast per day. So very exceptional timekeeping with this Hamilton Khaki Feel Mechanical. And that is nothing to sneeze at. It works very well. And even if I take it off the wrist for a couple days, put it back on, it still kind of keeps that same 
you know, timing, even if it's laying down or on its side, it just works really, really well. The bracelet uh, does not really taper very much. It's maybe a millimeter or two. It's 20 in between the lugs. I think it drops down to maybe 18 at the bottom. Um, the clasp is just a kind of a standard stamped clasp, but um, it's very tight. So when you put it in, like it, it goes together real snug. It doesn't feel like it's gonna go anywhere. Um, and it actually does require like a good amount of pressure to get it open. And believe it or not, they put an extension in here. Um, I don't think it's a dive extension because it's not a dive watch. I call it a field extension. So if you have your heavy coat on or, you know, you're out in the field and you want to wear your watch over your coat, not your wetsuit, that's going to be what that's for. Let me get a quick look at that case back real quick. So you can see it's kind of a, um, you know, a br circular brushing around there with a little bit of media blast on the top. Uh, again, water resist to five bar, 50 meters, Swiss made, and that's it. Uh, the end links are solid. They're not hollow, but they are hollowed out. Um, but they're still solid. So I don't know why they hollowed them out. I guess maybe just for fitment or something. But uh, very easy to take apart, very easy to put together with the bracelet because it does have the little tool apertures there. And so that makes it very easy to swap it out. It's an absolute strap monster. Put it on any strap, any 20 millimeter strap will fit on here, no problem. And uh, it really does change the watch a lot when you put it on a strap. And I've been wearing it on this Hamilton strap, which is kind of like the, the navy green one that you can actually buy this watch with. And that looks fantastic. It's ultra comfortable and lightweight. The watch comes in at, I think, about 80 grams or so. So it's not very heavy at all. And it's top notch. I really like this watch. All right, guys, uh, give me one sec. Let me shut the lights off. And you can check out the loom. Stand by. Okay, there we go. We have green loom, you know, not unlike the loom on the Ranger. Green loom. Not the fancy blue stuff, not ultra bright, but very, very long lasting and very legible really from any angle. They put plenty of it on those hands. So, uh, you know, you can tell what time it is, no problem. Pretty much anywhere you're looking and it works really well. And it's nice to have the loom on the seconds hand so you can tell if your watch is still going. Again, with 80 hours of power reserve, uh, a whole weekend is no problem and actually uh, in my testing, I've gone past 80 hours. I think I got to about 83 hours before it finally died on me. I picked it up, set it, wound it up, and it was good to go. Um, this, again, is the only hand-winding movement that I actually own. And I wasn't sure if I would like to have a hand-winding movement, just because automatics are so much more convenient, you know, with the whole perpetual motion thing. But uh, I like this because you sort of interact with the watch a little bit more. And... I don't know, I guess it's just the interaction with the watch itself. You're responsible for keeping this thing moving uh, instead of just letting it wind up itself. And that's kind of fun in like a silly way, um, but it's the simple things in life, right? So give me one sec, let me pop it on the wrist, hold on. Gotta take off the Ranger. And uh, I'll probably do a little compare and contrast between the Ranger and the um, Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical. Seeing as how they both are mechanic or you know field watches, uh, I think it'd be cool to kind of compare them. So let me zoom out a little here so you guys can kind of see. Um, on my seven and a half inch wrist, this is just about as good as it gets. Uh, it is not tight. I found a perfect fit. Um, there are three, two or three, yeah, three little micro adjust holes there, uh, but it's a comfortable watch by nature. So. It doesn't take a whole lot to make it fit well. There's like no rough it. There's no rough or sharp edges anywhere. You just put it on the wrist and you kind of forget it. And it's so flat that, you know, you wear a jacket or long sleeves. The thing just kind of disappears. And one thing I really like about this watch is that it's not gaudy at all. You know, it's not shiny. It doesn't really scream watch collector. But, you know, people in the know will be like, oh, nice Hamilton. But most people are just like, oh, that's just, you know, a stainless steel watch. There's really nothing fancy about it. And that's kind of one thing I really like about this watch. That's kind of part of the reason I'll wear this thing out and about. You know, if I'm out in the neighborhood, I don't want people to be like, oh, you know, the rock and, you know, $3,000 watch while he's riding his bike. Nope, just a simple watch. Simple three-hander, 
not too expensive, relatively speaking, comfortable, and extremely durable. That is what I really like about this watch. And it's a true field watch. So take it out, enjoy it, beat it up. It'll take it, no problem. It'll keep going. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Everybody have a great night. Bye now.